Hi everyone, I am super excited to share that we have released another great feature at Permit called Permit Elements. Permit Elements is a set of pre-built and embeddable UI components that provide fully functional access control experiences, allowing you to safely delegate them to your end users. Elements such as user management, audit logs, approval flows, API key management, emergency access, and more are going to be ready for your use. In today's tutorial, I will introduce you to Elements and show you how simple they are to implement. So without any further ado, let's get started. What you can see in front of you is the Permit Elements homepage. This is the place where you'll be able to create your elements, configure your elements, customize them, then copy the final code snippet that you'll then be able to embed into your application and see Permit Elements come to life. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to specifically focus on the user management element, and that's the one I'm going to use as the example of what we go through to actually create our own customizable permit element. But before we click on this create element tile to actually open up the pop-up window, I want to give you some background into what kind of roles I have configured and what users are currently in the system. So if I go on the policy editor within permit, what you'll see is that I have created some very basic sample roles for this tutorial. I've uh, created five roles and I've called them assignable role, developer, product manager, super admin, and viewer. Now, it's important that you remember these roles because you'll actually see them appear in the permit element and you'll see how we almost introduced this concept of authorization for authorization for taking these permissions and applying them to meta permission levels to manage different access for that specific element. Now, before we do that, let's actually go into our users panel within permit, and you'll see that we have a bunch of users that I have already added here, of which one of them, Philip right here, is me. Now, for each user, I have assigned a specific role, and I gave myself the role of super admin. Now, this will be important for me to explain later on how that element actually appears for specific roles, and you'll see how the element changes as I change those roles. So now I think I gave you enough background for us to actually jump in and click that tile and create our first ever element. So we are on the permit elements dashboard. Let's click create element. And there we go. What you get introduced with is a whole pop-up screen. Now, there is two sides of this pop-up screen. The left side is the customization and configuration, not only of the levels and roles, but also of things like colors and you know, default customizations of what the element will actually look like to your end users. And on the right, what we have is the live preview. As we make changes on the left-hand side, we'll see those changes take effect on the right-hand side. Now, not only that we will just see the changes of the customization and making it look like something that's part of our brand or part of our company, but also we'll be able to select what that element will look like for that specific meta permission level that we will assign roles to on the left. And we're also going to be able to pick what tenant do we actually use that's going to then take effect on what kind of users we have in this element. Now, this is great when you're working with concepts of multi-tenancy, but in this tutorial and in this project example, I have not created any more than one tenant, which is called default. So this default dropdown is not available for us to change. However, we can change this role permission level and look at the different roles uh, and what that um, default preview of the element will look like for each permission level for and for each role that we assign to that permission level. Now, we also offer the ability to change between uh, screen sizes. At this moment, it's not going to be visible, but we do support native mobile as well. Now, the first thing that we actually need to do for an element is give it a name. And I'm just going to very simply and boringly call it user management. Now, once we do that, let's actually go ahead to create uh, and assign all our roles. Now, all the roles that are available within permit will render inside this hidden role permission level that we have right here. Now, let's assume that maybe some of these roles we don't want to add, but some of these roles we do. So in this case, I'm going to want any user that has the super admin role to be the workspace owner for this particular element. And as you can see, as soon as I added this role, and because we're viewing what the element will look like for this permission level, it renders live what this uh, permit element will actually look like to the end user with that specific role who has logged in to the application. Now let's assume that maybe I want my level two to manager to be uh, anyone who has the role of a developer. 
then maybe I want my viewer to be someone who has the role of a viewer. Now, the assignable role level, I will explain in a second, but I specifically call the role assignable role, so you will know which role I'm actually referring to. Now, in this case, I want to not include product managers as part of this element configuration, so I'm just going to leave them in hidden roles. Now, as you can see, as I've added all these uh, roles to those permission levels, more actually users appeared. And the users that have appeared are the users that I have assigned those, uh, those specific roles to already within the system. So you can see we have Patrick, SpongeBob, Sandy, and myself here, where I'm a super admin. Now, because we're looking at this specific element from the permission level of a super admin, in this case, or the workspace owner, I can actually create and invite new people. So I can say hello at... Uh, permit.io, for example, and I can assign this person a new role. Maybe I want permit.io to be a super admin and I can send that invite. I can also change the roles of certain people. So maybe now I want Patrick to be a different role. Well, that is possible. But what happens if maybe I see this element as a viewer? Well, let's actually change this permission uh, level and what the, uh, what the live preview renders for us. And what you'll see is that all that configuration where we could invite a an user is not available to us anymore, or we could change the role of a specific user. That's also not available. So as you can see, that element does change and that those permissions are taken away from the users that are not supposed to have them. Now, for, for example, for level two, which is a manager, um, if I wanted to change a role, I can, but I cannot assign roles that I hired in manager. So super admin suddenly does not become available here. So maybe if I have someone with a role of super admin like myself, I cannot change that role anymore. So you can see how that hierarchy of permissions actually proceeds throughout the permit element. Now within the preview, if I actually try and send an invite, what you'll see is that it did not create the user because this is just a preview. It's not actually a live element. So no actions will actually Actually take place here uh, for you to be able to do anything specific. Now, once we're happy with our assignment of roles and how we distribute those roles for that specific permit element, there is other configuration options that we should also focus on. The first option here is that we can pick the default role that we assign when we create new users. At this moment, you can see that the role is nothing, it's just assigned role, but maybe I want to change it to be a developer. So every new user that I add, the default just is selected as developer. Well, we can change that. Then we have some theming configuration options. Maybe we can show or hide the title, so this member suddenly disappears. Maybe I want to change it from members to users. Maybe that makes more sense for my company or for the users that are using my system. I can change the background color of the permit element. I'm just going to keep it as white. I can change the primary color of the element and maybe I want to make the button more blue. I can also change the button text. Maybe rather than send invite, I just want to say invite user. Uh, maybe that's you know more up my brand if I shall call it that. Then we have user data. A management. So how do we want this user data to appear within the element? By default, it is going to be an email. However, maybe we just want to have uh, just the full name of those users. Or maybe we actually want to have both, the full name and the email. Well, I'm just going to leave it like this because that seems fit for the element that I might be designing. The other option that you also get is to configure a webhook. Now the webhook will inform you of specific events that are relevant for that element. In this case, for a user management element, a webhook configuration here will let us know whenever someone, a client or a customer of us or someone on the team has added or invited a new user through the permit element. And this will change for every other element that it might be for the specific actions or functions that might be most relevant to the element. Now, once we're actually happy with all our configuration, we can go ahead and create this element. Now, what you will see is a notification that this element was created successfully, but suddenly this tile has appeared here, which says, are you ready to embed this element into your code? And at this point, I can say, yes, we are, because I have already launched a very simple React application where we can embed this piece of code. So what we can do is you can get the code, you can copy that code snippet, and paste it into your application. Now for the purpose of this tutorial, I've already have this code snippet within my tutorial. So I'm just going to copy that source code, that unique URL that's generated for us for this iframe. And I'm going to go into my VS code and I'm just going to replace this iframe here, this source code with the one that was generated for me. Now everything is great, but this is not everything that you need to do to make this iframe work. There's actually two little other steps that are very important. Now, as part of you already using Permit, 
you will need to install the permit.js package if you're using React. So you will just either do npm install uh, permit-js or yarn add permit-js. Then of course, because you've already used permit and you had to use permit to use permit elements, you already have that instance in your server side uh, where you initialize that permit instance so you can actually refer to it. Now, once you have that for permit elements, we actually need to configure a backend root. And I've got a very, very simple um, Python server running here that I'm going to show you where I have specified the three main variables. The first one is the token, is that SDK key that you get from permit whenever you initialize your app, and it's going to start with permit underscore key underscore and a random number of digits and numbers that will come on the end. I have currently set the user as myself. However, this user will be the current user that has authenticated through an authentication provider. It could be of zero, it could be clerk.dev, it could be super tokens, whatever authentication provider you're using, this is the user that you pull out from that JSON web token or, for, or from the current session that's running within your application. Then you can also specify a tenant. In this case, I am dealing with the default tenant. So this is what I have passed in here. Now, because permit elements is extremely secure and that's the way we want to keep it, you have to make sure that you're doing all of this logic in the backend. So if you're taking a user from the front end and you're calling that user, you want to pass in that user session or that user JSON web token and send it to your server to make sure then you can manipulate that user information and actually log that user into the element. And this is exactly what we're doing here. We created a backend root that calls slash login underscore elements where we create essentially uh, an action where we call permit.elements.loginAs which is a function that takes two parameters. The first one is the current user that is authenticated within the system or the unique ID of that user or the email, however you decide to evaluate that user within your system and the tenant that we're currently working with. So if you have a multi-tenancy project set up, you would pass in the tenant that you directly want to refer to. In this case, I have specified default because I only have one tenant within the permit system. Now this is the backend root and this is the backend server that we essentially created here. If I actually go into my front end app, you'll see that I have an import of permit here where I'm uh, calling permit from permit-js, which is the package that we installed previously. Uh, I have a reference to what my backend URL is. And because I'm running this on localhost here, I'm referring localhost 8080. And I've set up two functions. The first function is the login user where we call permit.elements.login where I pass in the login URL. So that backend URL that we want to hit on our server, where we then log in as a specific user. And we also pass in the login method. In this case, we're logging in here using a cookie. Now the login method is very important and it's very important that you use the same login method in the backend as well as in the frontend to avoid any course issues. Now there is three login methods that we provide within permit elements that are available to you. The first one is logging in using a cookie. The second one is logging in using a Burr token. And the third one is logging in using any HTTP security header that is your preference essentially to pick. Now the second function I have provided here is the permit.elements.logout function. Now, every time you're logging in a user into your system, you also want to call this login user method or login as method to make sure that the current user that's logged in within your system also gets logged in to the existing elements that will exist within your application. And in the same way, if you're logging that user out of your system, you also want to call permit.elements.logout as part of that whole functionality to make sure that the user that was authenticated within the system is then essentially logged out of those elements and does not have access to them anymore. Now, once we actually configured all of this and we made sure that it works and we've embedded our iframe, we can actually navigate to our application. And I've got a very simple one here set up. And if I actually just refresh it, I have two buttons here. I have a button for logging out of permit elements, which is not what we're going to do right now. And I have a button to access that permit element. So let's actually click it. What you'll see is that it will load this identity and it will show us the, currently, uh, the current element that we have actually configured ourselves. Now, because I am logged into the system as uh, Philip, which I have given myself the super admin role, I have access to maybe inviting users. So maybe I can say hello at permit.io. I can pick the specific role. We set the developer as default, but maybe I want to specify the assignable role. And now this is a good time for me to reference what an assignable role is. Now, an assignable role 
is, for example, someone who has that role within the system will not be shown within this permit element. So the, their username and their email will not be available with that role in the system, but that role just exists for us to be able to assign that role to new users that we invite into the system. So in this case, I have selected this assignable role to invite this user as the specific role, which has been marked for that meta permission level of only assignable roles. So they're only available for us, the workspace owners or the managers to assign. And I can just go ahead and invite that user. And what you'll see is that that user here has been assigned that assignable role has shown. And if I actually go back into permit and go back into our users, and that user here has been created with that assignable role. But what happens if maybe at this point, I want to remove some of the permissions here. So maybe I want all the users with the role of super admin to not be able to invite users anymore. I just want them to be able to view this element. Well, actually we can go back into permit elements and uh, before I actually go into the element, I think it's important to show that the iframe has been successfully embedded and it's in production. But now let's say I want to revoke some of those permissions. I can go on to edit element. I can take the super admin role and drag it into the viewer permission level and save this element. Now, because this iframe is already used, it's already embedded and active, this pop-up will show uh, to just make sure that you're not making a mistake and will ask you to confirm to update that iframe. In this case, yes, I do want to update that iframe and we can see that those changes have successfully taken effect. So now let's go back to our app. Let's refresh this page. And what you'll see is that now, because I've changed this permission level, suddenly I can't interact with this element. I can only view the users. I can see the roles of those specific users that are within this element, but I cannot invite anyone anymore. And I cannot assign them to a specific role, nor I can change the roles of other people because I have been put into that meta permission level that doesn't allow for that within this specific element. And I think that's a great place to wrap up because this is all that you need to know about permit elements. The implementation is super simple. It's very easy to use and it gives you so much power over your system. Now, this is just for user management. There's also audit logs that you'll be able to play with. There'll be approval flows. There'll be API key management. There'll be emergency access and more. And we're more than happy to hear your opinions of what elements you'd like to see within the permit system. So if that's something that you'd like to share with us, make sure that you join our Slack channel. I'll leave the link in the description of this video. Ask us any questions, come chat to us. We're all friendly developers that love to have a chat about development, about new features, new cool products. Uh, so we'll be more than happy to see you there. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe for other cool future videos. So enjoy Permit Elements, take the hassle away from writing your own access control and focus on the valuable stuff.